You're listening to today's inspirational message on the Proverbs with Kurt Bjorklund. There's an old movie, the iconic movie, When Harry Met Sally. And one of the scenes in the movie is when Harry says to Sally, and I'm going to paraphrase this, is he says, a man and woman can't just be friends because whenever there's friends, there's attraction and they have a sexual tension that causes them to want to be together physically. And Sally is horrified at this idea and says she has lots of friends and that there's no way that that's true. And then the movie plays out and they become friends and then they ultimately get together, although for a while they're not sexually attracted to each other, showing in a way that friendship can be the basis of a great relationship but also kind of reinforcing this idea. Now, I certainly believe that it's possible for men and women to be friends to a degree, but the point of when Harry met Sally is to be careful with emotional connection. And here's why I bring this up in this connotation. When we're in Proverbs chapter 5, what we know is that Proverbs is telling us about how to be careful not to get uh, caught into an illicit sexual relationship. But what it does is it tells us to drink water from our own cisterns and speaks to the need for an exclusive relationship, enjoying the relationship you've given me. And then there's this idea here of what I'm going to call an emotional connection. Chapter five, verse 19, toward the end of the verse says, let her breast fill you at all times with delight be intoxicated always in her love. And the Hebrew word for intoxicated is shagah. And it's used two other times in this immediate context. In verse 20, it's used of being intoxicated with the forbidden woman. And then in verse 23, it's used for being led astray by his lack of discipline and great folly. And so this word that's translated led astray by something is so strong that that we're being led astray by something that's so strong that it's hard to resist. The implication is that you will either be intoxicated by your spouse's love or there will be a temptation to be intoxicated by others' love. And here's why I bring up when Harry met Sally. It's not that friendship with somebody is uh, necessarily a wrong thing. I'm not sure that everybody needs to run around scared that any friendship becomes sexual. But the point is to foster the emotional connection with your own spouse to such a degree that that connection is so strong that no other connection even begins to register in the same uh, kind of space in your life. And so this really highlights the need for a deep emotional connection that leads a couple to love and being being together and discovering all the deep things that are within the other person. This kind of emotional connection is not possible without uh, prioritizing the other person's heart. I don't know if you have been around little kids, but when my kids were young, one of the things they loved to do was play this game of chase. And what they would do is they would say, chase me, dad, chase me, dad. And I would chase them and they would run. And what they would do, though, is, is they would run, but they actually at some point wanted to be caught because simply getting away wasn't always fun. And so you would chase them, you would catch them and then they would get away and they would run again. And and it was like this game. And sometimes I think as we age and mature that we're really just overgrown kids who want to still be chased and still want to be caught. And the picture here of being intoxicated by the wife of your youth or the spouse of your youth, is this beautiful idea of saying, continue to chase one another, to pursue each other's hearts, to know each other's deepest parts, and you will safeguard your marriage because your marriage then will not be vulnerable to simply the illicit advances of other people or the desires that other people have in your in your life. And then chapter five just ends with these words. It says, for a man's ways, verse 21, are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. The iniquities of the wicked ensnare him, and he's held fast in the cords of his sin. He dies for lack of discipline, and because of his great folly, he is led 
astray. And again, that idea of being intoxicated. So here, this, this chapter really is a choice between being so naive, so foolish that you let the wayward woman, the wayward man ensnare you into their way of life and there's a consequence or you drink water from your own sister and you prioritize your own spouse and you pursue them, cherish them, enjoy them, have an emotional connection, be exclusively theirs. And that is the greatest safeguard for your marriage. And so today, this week, make a decision to say, I'm going to choose the spouse of my youth to be satisfied, to drink water from my own cistern rather than from the wayward person. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.